welcome back to my kitchen for a new dessert devotion. I can't wait to share with you an easy dessert recipe and a short devotional. Our featured recipe is an apple pear galette. I can't wait to show you. I'm going to start out by slicing three apples and three pears. I got this recipe from one of my great classmates, Dorothy Wells. She has a blog called The Pandemic Chef. Well, I had some fresh pears from one of my church members' backyard, Aquilin, and so I thought this is the perfect excuse to try a new recipe. To my apples and pears, I'm going to add two tablespoons of lemon juice. Then I'm going to add three tablespoons of flour, three tablespoons of sugar, now let's talk about the spices. I have a teaspoon of ginger, and since I didn't have apple pie spice, I have half a teaspoon of cinnamon, a fourth a teaspoon of nutmeg, and a fourth a teaspoon of allspice. Then I'm just going to mix it all together, kind of coat my apple and pear slices, and then I'm going to cook this in the saucepan on low for about 20 minutes until it's almost tender. While that's cooking down, I'm going to get my pie crust ready. I just turned this out on a flour surface. You can use parchment paper, but I'm going to use my silicone mat. I'm going to put both of the pie crusts that come in the package together. I've let them thaw out for just a couple of minutes. It's okay if it's still a little cold. We're not going to manipulate it a lot. I'm just going to flour it a little bit and just kind of press the two pie crusts together. Now I've warmed up about a fourth cup of apricot reserves. I just put them in the microwave for about 20 or 30 seconds just to make it easier to spread. And I'm just going to put this on my pie crust and leave about a two inch gap around the edge. Now I'm ready to put my fruit on top and wow, <laughs> my kitchen smells really amazing right now. And if you care to be cute, I am using some tongs just to arrange some of the fruit on top so that it's kind of cute in a little design so it makes my galette look extra fancy. Now let's seal the deal by crimping the edges on our galette. Then I'll brush my crust with a beaten egg and this will help it brown nicely in the oven and give the crust a little shine. Then I'm just going to sprinkle the edges with a teaspoon of granulated sugar. Some turbinado or demerara sugar would provide a nice texture and taste too. Now we're ready to put this in the oven on 350 for about 35 minutes. We just want our fruit to be tender and we want a nice golden brown on our crust. So while our galette is baking in the oven, let's settle in for our devotion. You know, years ago for Lent, I decided to give up scrolling. Now, what is that? It's of course looking at your phone. Now, I didn't ban myself from social media or from using the internet, but what I did was, you know that mindless scrolling you do while you're waiting for a doctor's appointment or you're waiting in the carpool line or you're on hold on the phone? anything like that. I would fill that space with just scrolling mindlessly through my phone. And I don't know if there was something about it that I realized wasn't neutral. And really, it was a lot about the content that I was reading while I was scrolling. As a matter of fact, during the pandemic, a new word was coined for that. It was called doom scrolling. Because as we scroll through our phones and we are inundated with all kinds of news and stories and statistics and interviews, it begins to make us feel a certain kind of way. Because a lot of times those stories are negative. The facts are indicating pending doom and it does something. It has an effect on us and it has a negative effect on us. So what can we do about that? We can't change the content of our news. We can't even change the facts 
about some of the tough things that are going on around us, like the enduring pandemic or the nature of our schools or the crime in our cities or our worries about employment or our health or pay. These things are a reality. But when we put those things together and we're inundated with it 24-7, well, it becomes its own beast, if you will. But instead of doom scrolling, what else can we do? Is there any good news? <laughs> well, as a matter of fact, there is. In Romans, in the 15th chapter, in the fourth verse, Paul says, For whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction, so that by steadfastness and by the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. So if there is any antidote to all of the doom scrolling that we get wrapped up in sometimes these days, the antidote to that is hope scrolling. That when we look through the scriptures, there we don't find that anxiety, that fear, that frustration, even that anger. Instead, we find joy, encouragement, and hope. So I hope you will pause this week and ask yourself, when I look at the television, when I look at my podcast, when I'm scrolling through my phone, when I'm looking through the news, how much of that is bringing about pain or anxiety or fear in the long run? And how can I change that? Transform a part of that to be hope scrolling. Use a part of the time that we spend consuming television or consuming those podcasts or consuming articles on our Kindle or even flipping through the newspaper or scrolling through our phones. Can we devote some of that time to the scriptures? To using that same media to ingest positive stories the good news of the Bible, to listen to positive and inspiring podcasts or articles or just listening to the Word of God every day. It is a way to counter that effect of doom scrolling with hope scrolling. I hope that you will make time to do that this week. Find the hope and the joy and the encouragement that God desires you to have through the scriptures. Happy hope scrolling. Our galette is fresh out the oven and I dotted it with a little more of the apricot preserves and who can resist adding some ice cream. Be sure to take some time every day to bring the hope of the scriptures into your life. Thanks for joining me for another dessert devotion. Be sure to follow me on social media for the next devotional.